The final topic that we have to deal with in the subject is that of vicarious liability. So vicarious liability concerns the situation where we have one person being held liable for the harm caused by someone else. Generally, we find this occurs in the situational relationship of employer-employee. There are other situations, but this is where we're going to concentrate on it in term, because it has obvious application in a business setting. The case for us to remember around vicarious liability is uh, Vabu Limited, Hollis and Vabu Limited. And what we have is a bicycle courier scooting down the road right on their bike and they happen to uh, run into someone who's walking along the street. Now, this person actually never catches the cyclist who injures them. They couldn't recognise the actual courier, but they did recognise the uniform. So they did know that it was someone who worked for crisis couriers. And so they commenced legal action against the company who operated under that name, Vabu Proprietary Limited. Vabu itself was arguing that the couriers were actually contractors and not employees. And so therefore they shouldn't be liable for the harm caused and that the person who was knocked over should actually sue the individual courier, not them as a company. Well, the court held that the courier was an employee for the purposes of vicarious liability and not an independent contractor. So where we have this employer-employee style relationship, we're going to see vicarious liability arises. What are the kinds of things that the court looks for? Well, they look for control. So what they looked at was that the uh, bicycle courier had to wear a uniform indicating that they worked for crisis couriers. They looked at the fact that the payments were set by Vabu and not negotiated, right? So that looks far more like an employment and control situation than a contractor. And that the couriers weren't skilled workers. And there were several other factors behind this that established Vabu had sufficient control in the relationship. For us to say that this is an employer-employee relationship for the purposes of of vicarious liability and as such and Vabu is liable for the harm caused by the couriers. So just again vicarious liability is where one person is held liable for the harm caused by someone else. We're concentrating on the relationship of employer and employee which is more about the control uh, of the person um, <coughs> who, who is alleged to be in the employer position rather than the strict legal definition that the strict definition that they give each other in terms of their relationship but what is the extent of your liability what happens if someone does something particularly stupid when they're employed by you so here we have the driver of a petrol tanker who is employed by the Northern Ireland Road Transport Board who is delivering um, petrol so he's unloading the petrol tanker like you see at the service station. And what's he do? He lights up a cigarette near the tank. And, and of course, it doesn't end well with the explosion, right? So <clears throat> he was obviously doing something stupid here. Should the, Nor should the Northern Ireland Road Transport Board be held liable for, the, for someone who lights up a cigarette next to a petrol tank, even when... It's within their policy that they're not permitted to smoke while doing it. And this is an interesting uh, area about this scope of liability. So the court held that the employer was, okay, so they were vicariously liable for the actions. Because they were doing what they were employed to do, but it was just being done in a negligent manner. So the core here, is they will be responsible if the action occurs as part of an authorised task, even if it's done in an unauthorised manner. What an employer won't be liable for is, say, a negligence on behalf of an employee that is not part of their authorised tasks. 
So, in summary, employers are vicariously liable for the actions of employees. Um, it, they, this occurs when there's an employer-employee relationship, and the test is how much control the employer has rather than what they call each other. They are only liable for the actions when the employee is acting in the course of his or her employment. That is, they're undertaking authorised work. They can be vicariously liable, and they can be vicariously liable even in if the actions, right, even if those actions are done in an unauthorised or negligent manner. What we find is that the employer is not liable where they're outside their scope of employment rather than how they carried out a particular task itself. So just to summarise simply in one sentence, employers are vicariously liable if they have sufficient control and if the behaviour is within the normal tasks required of that role, even if the execution is done negligently or in an unauthorised manner. The employer won't be liable if the task undertaken is outside the normal role of the job. And so that should give us a fair summary of vicarious liability. Remember, we have those two cases um, to remember here, Hollis and Vabu Limited and Century Insurance and Northern Island Road Transport. One about control in the employment relationship, another about the scope of the liability as being authorised actions, even if done in an unauthorised manner.